Hey there everyone, I'm Michael, and first off, excuse the little OBS window at the beginning, it's just because Fisher Studio does some wonky things whenever it's in focus and I hit F3, which happens to be my start recording button. Anyways, in this video, I decided to skip out on Time Lapse Tuesday because I have been doing homework for most of the night, and, well, that takes a while, and so does Time Lapse Tuesday, so I thought for the time being, I'm going to focus on smaller things on Time Lapse Tuesday, and with that said, I am going to be doing a tutorial on how to add terminal commands to the ShiftOS front end. So, it it is assumed in this video that you have a basic understanding of how C# -harp works and how attributes work, um, and how to do basic um, console applications within C Sharp because ShiftOS commands are a lot like console applications. There are some differences, but they're pretty much the same. So, to add a new terminal command, we have to think about three things um, with the terminal. So, when you type in a ter terminal command in ShiftOS, the first thing you end up typing um, ends up being a namespace followed by a dot and then a command. Namespaces contain multiple commands and commands can take in arguments by passing a JSON object after the command name and specifying key value pairs of arguments. With that said, in ShiftOS, the way namespaces work is as you can probably tell, a namespace is a lot like a class within C Sharp. The class can contain multiple methods which can be run, and they can take arguments, which are usually a list of objects. Um, so with that fundamental principle out of the way, we can pretty easily create terminal commands. So all you really need to do to get a command to run inside Shift2S is you can do, first off, you need to either add or find a namespace that you want to put your command in. I'll add a new one. And when it comes to ShiftOS, when you're adding in command namespaces, you want their class name to end in the or in, in the word commands. This is just so that we know it's a command namespace, and therefore the methods inside should be dealt with by the terminal and not us. So that's just the coding standard. To get this Michael commands class to be exposed to the terminal so we can run it as a command, we need to annotate it with a namespace attribute. And a namespace attribute will take in one string to its constructor, and that is the namespace value. So what you need to type in to be using that namespace. So, because my name is Michael, I'll set it to Michael. Then, to add a command, all we have to do is add a public static boolean returning function, and we'll call it hello. And then, we will return true. The reason you have to do this is in early days of the ShiftOS command system, if you returned false, it would consider the up or the command as not being runnable because there was a missing Shiftorium upgrade. This is deprecated, so until I get around to porting everything over to a newer system which uses voids instead of booleans, um, we won't or we will have to always return true. Um, there are ways to make your command run without, or with, th there are ways to make your command not be able to run without a certain upgrade, and I will show that off pretty soon, but for now, let's just get our command to run. So, inside this command, I will be using console.writeline to write hello shifters, And 
to expose this command to our namespace, all we have to do is annotate the function with a command, um, a command attribute, and send it a command name. So we'll call this hello. And if you compile shift OS, Wait for it to connect to the mod. Cool. If we run Michael, or actually if we run sos.help, you can actually see a list of all the namespaces and commands there already is. And as I'm reading the list here, um, all right, my command I don't think has a help entry yet, or it's not picking it up. Um, but it is there, because if we run michael.hello, you'll see it says hello shifters in our terminal. So, we have added a command in shiftOS that runs when we type in its namespace followed by its command name. Now this is pretty easy. A toddler could learn how to do that. Um, but next, I'm actually going to show you how to accept arguments with a terminal command. So all you have to do to accept an argument is to make your command require a dictionary of string keys and object values, and we'll name it args. So what we will do is our command will if args is equal to null console.write line no arguments else console.write line args.count arguments. So this command will basically check if the user actually provided arguments. If not, it will say no arguments were given. If so, it will say how many arguments were given. So if we run michael.hello, you'll see it says zero arguments. michael.hello, i, colon, a. It'll say one arguments. Um, you could make it say argument if it were one, but this is just a demonstration video, so I'm not going to worry about localizing that. <laughs> so, that's pretty simple. Now let's say you want to access an argument. Um, what you can do is, let's say the user provides a high argument, like we did, and it ends up being a string. Well, what you can do is, We can print out console.write line args high as string and when we run michael.hello hi hello it will print hello to our console. Now, there is a slight problem with our command. Let's say we provide a hey argument, but not a hi argument. ShiftOS will crash. The only way to get out of ShiftOS from this point is to move Visual Studio to another desktop within Windows 10 and stop debugging. If you paid attention to the error while I was closing it, it basically said that a key was not found matching high because we never provided high. This is a pretty trivial or trivial fix. You could you could do if args that contains key high.
and then else console write line you didn't provide a high argument. But that is that's a boring way to do it. Instead, we'll have the shift OS engine do it for us. Introducing the requires argument attribute. What you can do is you can annotate a command with this argument and you can pass a single string argument to its constructor, and that would be the argument name. So hi. And when we run our command, Michael dot hello I colon value it'll print value, but if we run Michael dot hello, it'll say you must supply a high value. And then it'll give you a mud error saying script not found. That's a bug. Um, so we'll do SOS dot shut down. Now, let's say you wanted your command to only run if there was an upgrade installed. Let's say you were doing something that involved the shifter and you wanted your command to only be accessible if the user has the shifter. Well, what you can do is within shiftOS, you can go to resources and you can have a look at all the shiftorium upgrades there are as I accidentally expand the wrong resources folder, my apologies. Um, it's right here, there we go. You can have a look at the shiftorium.txt file. Inside this file is a definition list of all the shiftorium upgrades in the game. Their names, their costs, their descriptions, and their dependencies. Um, this creates a pretty massive upgrade tree of over a hundred upgrades. What you can do is you can take any one of these upgrades and grab their name, for example, AL Mud Control Center, and what you do is you take the name without the quotes and you lowercase it and replace every space with an underscore and this becomes your upgrade ID. What we can do is we can use this upgrade ID in, conjunct in conjunction with a requires upgrade annotation and then pass our upgrade ID to it. And if the user does not have this upgrade, the command will not launch and will instead say that there was no script found. You can also make it require multiple upgrades, for example, mud fundamentals, which is the first upgrade that the user will buy in the game. So if you want to make a command that is not available in the tutorial, but available at the beginning of the game, you'll want to make your command require the mud fundamentals upgrade. I will not demonstrate this because I have all the upgrades unlocked, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You can also, um, if you have a command that, or you have a set of commands in the same namespace that all require the same upgrade, you can annotate your namespaces class with that requires upgrade attribute, and it'll, and each command will inherit that attribute, which is a pretty cool feature. You can also do semicolon separated upgrade lists like I showed off, if you are into that sort of thing. That's actually how dependency trees are made. Um, and yeah, so the next thing we can do is we want to make our command show up in help. The only thing is help doesn't really probe external commands yet. It's an internal engine thing. We have to fix that. But if you still want to expose your command to help when we implement it, you can use the various help um, as I realize that I cannot find it 
it is not showing up. Um, command. Oh, command obsolete. No, it's not that. Oh yeah, if you want to make your command obsolete, um, you can use that. I'm trying to figure out where it is. I haven't done this in a while. Shifter description is not something we want. I'll go get into that in another video. I just will save that for later. It's not implemented anyways, so... Anyways. This is how you add a terminal command in Shift OS. Um, so, as you can see, I've actually done this with something I like to call coherence mode, and if you, or no, kernel coherence, sorry, and if you look, it actually has the same um, layout as this command up here. We've got a namespace, requires upgrade, um, and down here we've got our command and requires argument, attributes, and public static pool, launch app, and then it takes in a dictionary of arguments. So it's laid out pretty s similar, um, and that command is actually what I used in my previous, or in one of my last videos, or one of my previous videos, where I showed off kernel coherence and getting, I believe it was command prompt running inside ShiftOS. So if you want to check that one out, um, you can look back a few videos on the channel and it'll be pretty pretty cool at least i'd like to think anyways i've been michael this has been how to add a terminal command in shift os i'll be getting into way more awesome thing in <laughs> um in the future sorry i lost my words for a second there um and i will be getting back to time lapse tuesdays don't worry I just want to take these next few weeks to sort of lay off development of ShiftOS and finish off my semester with a high mark. So until then, I'll be laying off the big stuff and working on the small stuff and doing these sorts of mini videos which can be recorded in one take and yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.